be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following, now came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw, and he believed. Till this moment, they had failed to understand the teaching of Scripture, that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Welcome to you all once again to our celebration of Mass on this Easter day and Easter greetings and blessings to you all, those of you here in church, those in the baptistry in the hall and those joining on the live streaming from home. You're all very welcome. And it's a beautiful sunny Easter Sunday in which to celebrate the joy of the resurrection. Now, as we know, people of the world are craving a message of hope this Easter after the pandemic that has left us all weary and in much need of hope. And there is no greater message of hope for, to the world than what Christians celebrate at Easter, which is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. The message of Easter is indeed good news for worn out and weary peoples of the world who have been through the trauma of sickness and death this past year and continue to live through this time of darkness. Just picking up on that theme of darkness, just imagine Mary of Magdala arriving at the grave of Jesus early on that first Easter morning, long before dawn, when it was still dark. On Thursday evening, we heard that Judas left the presence of Jesus at the Last Supper when darkness had fallen. Darkness was the experience of those who knew and loved Jesus in his passion and death, the betrayal, the suffering, and the crucifixion. The horror and the awfulness of the passion and death of Jesus helps us to reflect on the pain and suffering of the world this past year. The world has been through and continues to be in the valley of the shadow of death, the darkness of suffering and death, the darkness of lockdown, fear, and isolation. But everything changed on that first Easter morning. Nothing would ever be the same again. Darkness and death were destroyed forever. Mary of Magdala finds that the stone at the entrance of the tomb had already been rolled away. She had planned to anoint the body, to muse, to ponder and to pray, which is what we do at the graves of our loved ones. But he was not there. He had risen from the dead. The light overcame the darkness when the risen Jesus revealed himself to those who followed him, and they believed him as the Lord and Savior, crucified and risen from the dead. Last night we lit this Paschal candle in a darkened church, and of course light shines most brightly in the darkness, and it just shone beautifully in a darkened church. 
So the light representing the risen Lord, truly present when we gather here on this Easter day. The fact of the resurrection was the confirmation, the ratification of all he had said and done. He speaks in the very person of God. When he rose from the dead, those who, who had believed in what he said and what he did knew that was all true. And that's the invitation of Easter Day, to believe in the resurrection. It's all true. We are to believe it in faith. Jesus is not some figure of history. The resurrection is not some nice thing for Christians to believe. The truth is that Jesus is Lord. He is the eternal Son of God, crucified and risen from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus happened in history, and the resurrection has implications for us today and to eternity. To be a Christian is to believe in the resurrection. Last night after the Easter Vigil, I went off to bed at about a quarter past ten, hoping to get some few hours sleep before the first Mass this morning at 5.30 a.m., but the inevitable happened. The phone rang at just after midnight, a sick call to a local nursing home, so I went and anointed sadly somebody who had just died. But I thought about the instinct of the family to call for the priest. The sacramental life of the church finds its source in what we celebrate today, the resurrection. The anointing of the sick uses the words, call on the priest of the church who will pray over the sick, who will recover and grant food for the journey to those on their way to eternal life. That instinct is based on faith, belief in the resurrection, belief that Jesus rose from the dead and that the resurrection changed everything forever and for us now and, to, and unto eternity. We encounter the presence of Jesus profoundly here at the celebration of Mass. And what a joy it is that so many of you are able to return to this privileged encounter with the risen Lord. The coronavirus pandemic will re be recorded in history in years to come, along with other pandemics and plagues that came and went. But the resurrection endures forever. The resurrection is not only a turning point, it was and is the turning point for human history. It is the promise of everlasting life and of our own bodily resurrection. So I invite you all this Easter to grow in love of Jesus, truly present here at this moment of encounter with him at Mass. We are invited to bring his good news to as many people as we can who may not have yet heard that he is in fact alive and that his resurrection changed everything forever. Let us pray the Easter season that we might be renewed in faith, renewed in joy, and renewed, renewed in firm faith in Jesus, who was crucified and who rose again.